Is today's real estate market going to crash just like it did in 1982? Well, in today's video, we're going to go back and look at pricing from 1981 and 1982, as well as interest rates from that same time period. So we can use that information to guide us away from complete disaster in today's market. And I'm going to give you my prediction on if we can expect a similar market from 1981 and 82 to repeat itself in 2022. And stick around because, well, my answer might just surprise you. But on this channel, there is definitely one thing that should not surprise you. And that is, I'm gonna ask you to please click the like button for the YouTube algorithm, just like I do in absolutely every video I think I've ever done. And yes, just so you know, you clicking the like button really does help this video do better. So if we can get this video up to 150 likes, I promise to insert more silly GIFs into my next video, just like this one. Huh? Is it GIFs or is it GIFs? GIFs, GIFs. I'm sure you'll let me know down in the comments. Also, please subscribe and of course, if you think we're about to head back into markets that resemble 1983, well, you can book a call with me right now down below in the description with just a few simple clicks so we can get you sold on the backside of the peak rather than what might be an upcoming trough. And as promised, my prediction to answer the question about could today's market end up with massive declines like we saw in 1982? And while this answer might be surprising to a lot of you, I think, yeah, it's starting to look like it could. But what exactly happened to prices in the early 80s? And why do we have to listen to our parents and our grandparents always talk about their first mortgage being at over 21%? Well, it's not easy to find data from back then, specifically for my market here in the Fraser Valley of BC. One, because the MLS didn't actually go back in time to infinity. Benchmark price wasn't a thing yet. And back then, only average detached home prices were tracked. And fourth, well, good luck finding any of this info stored anywhere on a computer. Because... I don't know, what did they track it with back then? The Dewey Decimal System? But no fears, I did dig into the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board statistic packages and on their public facing site, the oldest package that they have available was from January 2010. And buried deep on the second to last page of that statistics report, I found the graph dating back to 1979 for detached homes in yellow. Fitting for the time, don't you think? So way back in 79, when homes started coming on to the multiple listing service, here in the Fraser Valley, the average home price was just over $50,000. Yep, for a detached home. And yes, that seemed much more reasonable even back then because the average household income was just a hair over $50,000, of course, adjusted for inflation. But let's get back to pricing. The late 70s saw a massive run-up of inflation and in 81, home prices right along with it. In fact, home prices here in my market in late 1980 went from about $70,000 up to easily over $130,000 in 1981. And to be honest, percentage-wise, that's not a whole lot different than what we've seen here in today's market over the last couple of years. But the big difference back then is in 1980, interest rates were hovering around 11%. Surely that was enough to keep house prices down, right? Wrong. House prices took off, and in 1982, those interest rates doubled to almost 22%, causing everyone who just bought a home at new record prices to see their home values slash in half. Not quite half. Well, no but pretty close, or easily back down to a much more respectable seventy dollars to $80,000. And well, yep, 2022 is starting to look a whole lot like the early 80s. You see, homebuyers made purchases during the pandemic on the advice from the central banks that interest rates would stay low for years to come. But with massive inflation kicking in, a war in Europe, and now a two-year supply chain issue that hasn't really got an end in sight. Those same central banks are now going back on their word and doing the exact opposite of everything that they said they were gonna do. Meaning that interest rates are going up. You see, high interest rates are not actually the problem because back in 1981, you had 10% rates. And even then, house prices started to skyrocket. The real decimation of the market happens when interest rates change too quickly. And that can work in both directions. Because one can argue the downturn that we saw in rates did just as much damage to the market as the increases we're seeing now will likely do. Because without access to really cheap money, there's a very good probability that investors would not have purchased purchased assets in the middle of a pandemic. And now the complete reverse is happening with increasing rates causing fear. And more increases cause more fear, and it appears that the next increase could be larger and faster. And that will create, yep, you guessed it, 
even more fear. And yes, this all means that if this keeps going, all of the recent profits that we've seen in real estate could be erased completely. So now with all this doom and gloom, firmly stopping you from buying real estate, what should you do with this information? Well, first off, never buy a property with less than a five-year plan. Because in five years, you will likely gain enough equity and pay down enough principal on your mortgage to offset any losses if we see a prolonged downturn. And the exact same thing could be said for investors. However, my plan with investors should be to hold the property for at least 10 years. Because yes, 1981 and 82 was the worst bubble that we we have ever seen in our market. And this year is starting to shape up to look a whole lot like those ones. But try and keep this in mind. Everyone that bought pre-October 1980 never even saw losses. And that will likely be true for anyone that purchased a property previous to 2021, or maybe anybody earlier than this year. Everyone that acted from about mid-1982 onward saw the market bounce around a little bit, but it was fairly stable. And this means that only people that bought in late 1980 through early 1982 actually saw massive decline in their equity. And I'm not playing this off. Some of those people did have to walk away from their homes. But if you did manage to continue to make your payments and weather the storm before the decade was out, your property values came back and even doubled shortly after that. And then doubled again, and then doubled again, and then doubled again. So yes, there is going to be some short-term pain over the next little bit, or even medium-term pain if you want to call it that. But time in the market beats timing the market. So if you do have a need to buy a property in the coming months, don't listen to all that doom and gloom out there because you likely have a need to get to the next step and life goes on. And if you need help, you can book a call with me right now down below in the description with just a few simple clicks so we can put a plan together for you to try and help you navigate this crazy market. You can download my informed buyer's guide in the description below as well. Please subscribe, click the like button, check out my new podcast with Tom Story called The Tom Story Show. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in a couple of days.